Today we're going to be working on this 2009 Dodge Cummins 6.7 liter diesel and what we're going to be doing is replacing the injector and to do that there's going to be quite a few components that we're going to need to be removing to get to the injector and remove the injector itself and to start obviously we're going to start with the battery removal or disconnecting the battery at least uh, to make sure that we don't have any power surges, power spikes, things like that because we do have uh, with the valve cover and harness installed a connection going to each injector so we've actually already removed the valve cover gasket uh, and we do have a video on how to replace a valve cover gasket if you need instructions on how to do that uh, so we're down to the injector itself and now we're going to show you the other steps involved in getting this injector out and putting the new injector back in as well as all the torque specs that are going to be involved because you will want to follow the torque specs to the letter on replacing the injector so Again, our battery is disconnected. We have our cover and valve cover off already. So let's get into this injector and show you what needs to be done. With everything on the top out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and need to start removing some components to get to the injector. And to start, we're gonna start with the actual fuel line itself. Now we have a connection at the fuel rail here for one side of the line, and then we have a connection on the other side of the line that feeds back to the actual feed tube for the injector. Now we're gonna use a 19 millimeter wrench to loosen those up. And once we have them loose, we can just thread those off. Now before I pull this line all the way off, one thing I will note, and I've already done it on this engine, you wanna take some shop air or some brake cleaner, something to just kinda of get some of the debris out of the way around the rail and around the actual insert for the feed tube. Any debris that finds its way into that, that tube or into that channel for the tube could find its way into the injector. And this is a common rail injection system, so any small amount of debris can actually get lodged inside of these injectors and cause them to stick wide open or just fail completely in the beginning. You don't want to have that happen, so at least try to clean this area out. We're in a fortunate spot here because this engine is on the stand. I know it sounds a little bit harder when you're thinking about it in the truck itself, but best case scenario, you know, if you can just get some shop air to this area, compressed air of some sort, or some way of cleaning out the area just to make sure we don't introduce debris into the system. And so with that said, we'll go ahead and remove the fuel line. Now we have a retaining nut that's actually sitting on top and holding down the feed tube going into the portal there for the injector. And, and what we need to do is we need to get that retaining nut off first. And it's a pretty tight spot here. So what I'm recommending and, and what I'm using is a short 15 16 socket because that'll fit right in that little spot. It snugs up to the side of the head so you're actually gonna have room to get an extension in there as well. And then you can break that free and have a little bit more room to work. So in the case where you may be working with the engine in the truck, this actually gives you a little bit more flexibility to get an extension in, whether it be a six inch or three inch, and work that retaining nut off. And as you can see, it comes out fairly easy. We wanna set that to the side. We know that we're only doing this injector, but if we were doing multiple injectors, it's always good to just keep what you pulled from each cylinder with the other components for that cylinder. On this particular piece, it shouldn't matter too much, but just on the safe side, always just keep everything with the cylinders it came from. So we'll put that to the side. And with that line off and that hold down off, we can now just grab that feed tube, give it a little wiggle. And now our injector feed tube or crossover tube is accessible, we can pull that out. Now one thing I will mention, and I'm not sure if it'll show up well enough here, but it's good to always replace these feed tubes. Now, in some cases you can get away with reusing them, but here's why it's always recommended to replace it. That seat, this is a crush fit or a torque to yield component, meaning once you torque it down, it creates a seat on that cone when it's torqued against the body of the injector. If it scars too much when it's torqued down, once you put it back in and torque it down the second time, it may not create the same seat, causing leak back on the injector and quite a bit of misfire as well as 
you know, the truck not running correctly at all or getting correct fuel to the injector. So we don't want that. And unfortunately, with these feed tubes, you can't just rotate it to see if it'll seat a different direction because it is a keyed component. So that little notch, that little key on there, only goes in one way. So once you seat that in there, that key lines up and it's in. So you can't rotate it and try to get another seat out of it. So what I will caution you on is, it is recommended to go ahead and replace this every time. However, if you do not replace it, and when you get the install com completed and it's done, if you find that you have no pressure or low pressure, or you're having a, a misfire on that cylinder, generally go back and look at this tube. It may not be seating like it was before, and you may just need to throw a new tube in there. Quite simple if that's the, that's the fix for it. So now that we have the line off, we have the retaining nut off and the feed tube out, it's time to pull our exhaust rocker arm off. We need to remove the exhaust rocker to access the hold down bolts for the injector. So, we have a single 13 millimeter nut holding the back side of the rocker arm on here. And then we're going to have a 10 millimeter nut holding it on in the middle. Now I apologize, that was actually a 14 millimeter, not 13. All right, we have that broken free. And again, we're gonna set that nut to the side along with our retaining nut for the feed tube. We know this is all going to the same injector. However, if you were doing multiple injectors, again, it's always wise to go ahead and keep every component together. And now with that nut off, we can now go and remove the middle bolt in the middle of the rocker arm, the hold down bolt for it. Pull back on that. And there's our hold down bolt. bolt. Set that with the other components we removed from here. And then as you can see, that rocker arm just pops right off. And then we can set that onto the side. And so now that we have the rocker arm off and everything else out of the way, we have two injector hold down bolts. One on each side of the injector. There's actually a bracket that holds it down. Those are going to be 8 millimeter bolts, so we're going to pull those out. And so with our exhaust rocker arm off and out of the way, we have our components for the exhaust side together and away from everything else. We're now going to go ahead and pull the intake side off. It's just gonna give us a little bit more clearance to get that injector out. And it's gonna be the same process. 14 millimeter on the rear bolt, and then that 10 millimeter in the middle. And once we pull these off, we'll keep them separate from the exhaust side. So now that we have our rocker arms out of the way, we can clearly see the injector here. The next step is going to be removing our actual hold down, injector hold down bracket. And the only thing left at this point is actually removing the injector itself. Now this is gonna be in there pretty snug. Um, usually these things have, you know, many tens of thousands of miles on them and they seated themselves pretty well and they have a good seal holding them tight. And so because these have been in here for so long and they are gonna be not necessarily seized, but pretty tightly you know, compressed in there, you wanna get it at least moving freely. I found it's easier just to grab a pair of channel locks and just easily start guiding it back and forth until you can get some movement out of it. Now you wanna be careful doing this because this is a vital core, meaning when you purchased your injector, 
you're gonna have a core charge on that and you're gonna to wanna to be able to return that core in. So just go easy on it. Just give it a few back and forths until you start getting some movement out of it. And then once you have it moving freely, I just took a small pry, nothing massive, nothing that's gonna cause any damage to the actual cylinder head itself or the injector. And I just went in from the back side. There's a lip under here, grabbed it, put my hands here and just gave it a light tap. Didn't take much at all once I had it spinning freely by using the channel locks. So now we can remove that injector and get that pulled out. And as you can see, we have some buildup on the nozzle itself. Definitely probably going to have a lot of soot and you know, some maybe possible debris in the actual fuel inlet. So it's good that we're replacing this injector today. And so one last thing you want to do before you reinstall the new injector, just double check your area. Make sure it's good and clean. There's no debris that's going to drop down into that port before we put the new injector in. Now to complete this installation, we're going to need two things. We're going to need a foot-pound torque wrench as well as an inch-pound torque wrench. There are multiple torque settings for this injector installation that we have to follow to make sure that we don't have premature failure on these injectors. And the first is going to be on the injector hold down bolts. Now those have two settings, two torque specifications that have to be met. The first, and so now with our 44 pounds set, we'll go ahead and start torquing down our hold down bolts for the injector. Now that we have those torqued down to 44, we're gonna go ahead and replace our feed tube. And so we'll go ahead and take our feed tube. We'll put it in where the key only goes in one way. We now have that in there. We'll take our retaining nut that we held off to the side. Go ahead and run that down, just barely finger tight. And now we're gonna need to torque this hold down nut to a preliminary number of 11 foot pounds. So there's 11 foot pounds on the hold down. And so now we can go back to the hold down for the injectors. So now that these have been set to 44 on torque and our retaining nut on the feed tube has been set to 11, we need to return to the hold downs on the injectors and then torque those down to, and that'll be the final torque setting on the injector hold downs is 71. And once we torque those down to 71 on each side, we're gonna come back to the retaining nut and torque that down to 37 foot-pounds. So the series goes 44 on both of the retaining nuts, our bolts for the injector, then 11 foot-pounds for the retaining nut on the feed tube, and then back to the retaining bolts for the injector, and then back to the retaining nut. And that is the series that you'll wanna go in with these injector installations. And that's gonna be on every injector, not just this particular injector. It'll be on any of the injectors that you change. So now that we have our injector replaced and our feed tube replaced and both our torque settings set for these particular items, it's now time to put our rocker arms back on. We'll go ahead and start with our intake side and we have our connector and our bridge here for the valves. Remember that dot, I'm gonna bring that over, make sure that dot is facing me. And what I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna give it a slight turn just to get the nut on. 
And I'm going to roll my pin and get my hold down bolt in place. So I don't want to tighten that down too much just yet. If I do, it's going to make it harder for me to get the exhaust rocker arm back on. So I'll get those in and at least a few threads in so that it doesn't move around on me. Then I'll take my exhaust side, put my connector back on there, and I'll do the exact same thing with the exhaust rocker. And then once we have these threaded down a little bit, they're just barely finger tight, we're gonna to torque those down to 27 foot-pounds. So now that we have our injector back in, our torque specifications right on our hold down for the injector, the torque specifications right on our feed tube, we have our rocker arms back in, torque specifications correct on those. Now, it just comes back to replacing our fuel line here, the one that connects the feed tube to the fuel rail. We'll put our valve cover back on. We'll make sure we get our connections back on our terminals for the injectors. And on those, you wanna make sure when you torque those down, there's where we came in with the inch pound torque wrench. And that inch pound torque wrench, you're going to want to tighten down those harness bolts to 11 inch pounds. 11 inch pounds on these terminals. Don't hand tighten it, because a lot of times a hand tight will actually be a lot tighter than 11 inch pounds. You do not want to tighten or over tighten on these terminals for the injectors. It can break them off or make them crack. And if that happens, you need a speed bump later on down the road, it could break off and now you've lost a full cylinder on the vehicle and you're chasing it trying to figure out why you're losing power on that cylinder. So 11 inch pounds on the terminals for the injector itself. Once we get the fuel line back on, we get the valve cover back on, we get the cover itself back on and the breeder filter, this job is basically complete. And hopefully now you have a better understanding of what it takes to replace an injector on a 2009 Dodge Cummins 2500 6.7 liter Thank you.